who can bring change in the lives of the young people? The answer is simple and straightforward. Only the young can change their life. John Maxwell, my mentor, always reminds us that you can never change people unless they change the way they think. If there is something we can do to people is to influence them, to accompany them, but when it becomes a personal choice to grow, they need to make that decision. And that is why we can never forget a simple, straightforward fact. We are created in God's image and likeness with all uniqueness. Which in chapter 3 of this book I talk about, free yourself by being yourself. Something else, again, we have seen from our media. We have a young man, Joseph Ndewangari, an 11-year-old who was spotted imitating Chef Kuinange. He was proud to citizen. And I love it when he's telling Chef that he's going to take his place. What made this young man to create such a confidence? When he got interviewed, he said he kept watching Chef, listening, and his voice gave him the confidence. When we work with the young people, one thing is right. They need to see in us what we have done right. When they admire, they will work their way out in building their talents, in building their potentials, in becoming free to do what they want. And this is what is so amazing to anyone out there willing to churn with young people. It's not easy, yet it's doable. And that is what we need to remember. No one has done it right for the first time. It doesn't matter even if it's going to take you several times of falling and racing. For you to have it right. In fact, what you need to know, the more you keep trying, the better you become. and friends farm it starts from here the farm where we have put so many structures so many things inside i'm bonface mokaya from the diocese of kisi one of the yarma missionary seminarian um, in third year student of philosophy and now this is how we came to the term the 3000 friends farm actually when we went we, we were having prayers to get the farm that is the land where we can construct our formation house, where we can do our things, where we can get our produce. And then Father Hiro decided to look for 3,000 friends who helped us to get this farm. And that is why we named it the 3,000 Friends Farm. Great, and I love the concept of 3,000 Friends Farm. One thing I have realized is 
nothing can be done alone. If they came together 3,000, what might have they done? Let's see. This is the fish ponds whereby we have uh, our, we come with uh, our small fishes and then we dip them inside. After a short period of time and then we harvest them, we use them in the farm, we sell to get money for the generation of the projects and that is how we are progressing with these fish ponds. We have grown in a culture that sometimes we think that uh, there is so much rich around and we don't know how to manage it. But here is something I found exciting. West is not west unless we is wasted. Now tell us what this mean. Actually, we came uh, to get this concept uh, when we came to this farm. Actually, uh, we were very new here and we moved from Kibera to this place uh, which is called the uh, 3000 Flens Farm. And that is where we came to find the concept that West is not West unless it's wasted. And then Father Hairo said that now this farm is going to be an organic farm. A farm whereby we are not going to use chemicals. And then he came out with this concept. Then he introduced the students that nothing we are going to waste. And then he changed the concept and said that West is not West, West till it is wasted. And then in this concept now, we came together that everything from the kitchen, that whatever we attain from this farm will be used unless we, uh, we ourselves decide to waste it. And uh, after this, we decided to come out that when you cut something or when you break something, it can be renewed. And now this is the fourth year, we are using this same concept and actually this concept is making us to produce a lot of things, many things from this farm. Let me show you how it works. The kitchen waste, whereby you can see the bills of potatoes, some remains of uh, spinach, some remains of uh, bananas. And now here we come and put them inside the water for a while. After putting them in the water for a while, then you remove them. After that, after removing them, you just put them inside here. Here we have the red worms. And these red worms, at the end of the day, after putting those uh, chicken remains, you just put them here with a little bit of green grasses, and then you put them here. After pu putting those uh, kitchen remains here, at the end of the day, the red worms they, uh, consume that as food, and after which they produce something like a liquid. And this liquid is uh, manure. We are not going to miss the manure. Reason being, after applying the same manure at the farm, we are going to recycle again to come back with the fetches and these fetches are spinach, the bananas, the potatoes the, and so many things from the farm using the same manure and at the end of the day you find that we are not going to miss uh, any amount of manure that we are going to use uh, from these uh, red worms. So those are the things and that is how we are using that concept to produce all these things and then we go back to the statement that west it is not west till it is wasted. How long does this process take? This process can take uh, more or less like one month to produce this manure. 20 liters for one month or you 20 don't liters, need to wait? 20 liters for, let's say for three weeks, it can be full. Okay. And then because you see, if we count the packets that they are uh, like uh, more or less like uh, six, five, then at the end of the day, you find at the end of the month, we have uh, more than 10, 20 liters of this manure. So apart from the kitchen waste, I can see some other wet stuff here. Is that also from the kitchen or from the farm? Uh, all these waste, some are from the farm. At us, like now the glasses we cut from outside there and then we put here to cover such that for the food inside, not to get dry from that water that we normally dip inside. Oh. So the glass is to cover, to make it not to lose that water very fast. So where do you get the red worms? The red worms, uh, we put it, then after which we, they normally give birth. Then we spread them to different packets. Can we see some of them? Now you can see one here. These are the red worms. I see. What about these? Eggshells, what are they used for? These eggshells, at the end of the day, that we grind them till they become like a powder-like form, and then after which 
we mix that powder like foam and then we uh, with food of the chickens like layer mash uh, chicken mash and then you gift them back to the chickens it's because if you give them direct at the end of the day the chicken will start eating the eggs so when you uh, you grind them they cannot eat the eggs because you have mixed with the food of that uh, the chickens either layer mash or chicken mash, chicken mash and then you give back to the chickens what does this add to the chicken it, it hurts like uh, we say that it hurts like vitamins to the chickens it, it gives them uh, energy like now they can also not uh, like they cannot like uh, we say that they are that those uh, chicken diseases like those like the food rots those things so the chicken cannot be affected like uh, from such diseases so okay. you control them what about these plants what are they okay here we have the bamboo trees whereby it has been put into the nursery bed and at the end of the day we are going to remove them from here and either we want to fence them where there is a lot of water because uh, mostly this farm is affected by floods when it rains. So these bamboo trees are going to help us mostly those places which are affected by water and by those floods. At the end of the day, you, we can make uh, some terraces to direct the water where it is going to. Because with the bamboo trees, it can make us to control that floods very easily. What about these avocado seeds? Why have you put them in this container? Yes, this one we are actually we have put them here for germination without using any soil. In case anybody wa wants to come here and uh, plant, uh, go with an avocado which has not been used by any chemical. In case you want to plant in your farm without using the soil, you just put here and then you go at the end of the day, you go and plant in your farm. So it is going to germinate from these packets and then you just go and uh, plant them. something else that uh, we have found uh, exciting in this farm for those who have never seen pigs and how they are taken care of you only see them when you find pork but you don't know how you get pork ready which sometimes is very tasty let's hear something about rearing of pigs okay well, welcome and uh, my names are Atom Nene and here in the 3000 fence, we do rare pigs, the white large. White large type of the pigs. Here we have the jasmine and we have given birth to four piglets. And here in the ring of the pigs here is quite simple. You only have to start with the, at least two or three piglets, two females and one male and here as you can see the structure is quite simple and for our piglets here we require it if to mature enough it requires only eight months and after eight months you have a mature male, a female and male which can easily mate and you have your piglets after Four months and here in the structure here of our pig we have a, a, a structure here for the piglets here inside here we have a, a bulb which produces light energy which changes to heat for our piglets when it's too cold in the in the night or during the day daytime so when it's cold they enter inside here so they can get warm. And for our pigs here, uh, for what I can say, the way we feed them, we have uh, feeds from which we buy from the farmer's choice, which we use to feed them, at least to get uh, good quality of meat and also to improve the, the piglets to get fat enough easily. You have said you are taking feed from Farmer's Choice and I can see your piglets and the mother, they are very clean. 
what is the trick? Because some of us, we are used to think that uh, pigs are very dirty. Why is it opposite now? <laughs> okay, here comes the easy task. Here, we do separate the, the, the room by two, which we put the other side, we put the sodas, and this side we are left in for the, for the mother and the children also to put on their waste. So here, the pigs even, they are very intelligent enough to know that this side is for sleeping and this side is for, for the waste. So that's why you see our pigs here, they are very clean and even they are very in a good health. Okay. Like now this, if you were to slaughter it and sell, how much will it cost or how much will you earn from it? Okay, for this one, the fully grown one, you can earn at least 40,000 40, or 45, depending if it was a, if it was a male, it's more cages than the, than the female. So you get more money from the male one than the, the female one. So you are saying if I buy these pig rates in the next eight months, I can earn from them 40,000 up to 45,000? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And average, how much do you, what is the cost of feeding? The cost of feeding is usually um, from 20 to, to 30,000. So you earn your profit at 15,000, 10,000 there. Wow. Mm -hmm. Is it something that you can encourage young people to venture into? Yeah, of course. Because this, this, the, the small ones, they eat only half, half kg a day. As they grow, as they reach two months, three months, you increase the, the food. So by the time it's mature, you incur a little cost. So you will earn more profit on the, on the venture in the, the pig, pig farming. What have you loved uh, in the pig farming? In the pig farming here, uh, by interacting with the pigs, they, they are more friendly. Then they, they usually say they are more harsh, they can bite you. No, this one is not the issue here. These pigs are very friendly, and if you walk inside here, they even go out, they let you work, then they will come back after you have finished cleaning. So it's more easier working on the, with the pigs. Are you the one training them, or is they are just naturally? They are just naturally intelligent. So if you come washing, you open the door, they get out. You just wash after cleaning, they get inside, then you take the waste in the biogas. Yeah. Thank you so much. So the waste is always collected to the biogas that we have seen in the farm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Welcome. Here we have separated the female from the, the, the male one, simply because the, the male one is more aggressive when it's come when the, the female has half the, the piglets. So we have separated them because it may even hurt the small ones, or even kill them. So we have separated them to ensure that the, the piglets grow very well, and also we, we, we ensure that they, they are more safer on the other room. Another part of this 3,000 friends farm, we have some rapids. Tell us how did you start with rapids? In, in this farm, 3,000 friends farm, here we started with uh, five females, and three, three males. So here we do produce the the bunnies, with the, the small ones for the for the for the rabbits. Here one one rabbit can do give birth to six or seven. So that the multiplication is quite vigorous. And you, in time, after say three or six months, you have more more rabbits. And here we we just taken this room for a little bit, for the keeping of the rabbits, and then we shall encard them in the, their rabbit cages, where they give birth and their food giving is more easily than in an open area. So here we just put them for the little while, then we take them to their cages. So in the rabbit keeping here, the meat, we do rabbit keeping here for our own consumption, the local consumption here for the meat and for also for the for their their skin okay
What do you use the skin for? The skin we, we use them to make some mats. See the mats? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, how much will one of these rapid costs if you have to sell? Okay, for this one, one full grown one, we used to sell them between 1,000 to 1,500. So if I buy two or three mature one in the next six months, what approximate number of rapids would I have? Approximately you will have around 20 or 25, depending on the, the how many bunnies they will have to give back to. Now you have heard, maybe sometimes you didn't know that you can get to rear some rapids and get some earning from it. Within a short period of time, we are getting excited and bringing you so much information that you need to know as a young person. The only thing you need to realize is you need to start applying what you are seeing. Get ready to change your life. Thank you once again. something about this water we are seeing which is that here what is it for actually this one is not uh, that water it is uh, manure and this is the from the cows uh, west whereby when we are cleaning inside where the cows are staying that place there you can see the cows and then after which we collect that water after washing we just direct the water to this place and this water at the end of the day we are going to take it from this place and take it to the side of the biogas and this is now where we are going to generate our biogas from, uh, from where, uh, which we are using uh, inside the kitchen. Now we are heading to the place of the beehives, whereby we have uh, more or less like uh, six beehives. And all these six beehives, all of them, they have bees inside. And uh, sometimes we are first honey after two months after three months uh, but from the beginning you take six months for you to take uh, the first harvesting and then the produce of this honey actually it is natural not no chemical being used nothing being used it's just natural from the flowers from the trees of nature whereby they get their uh, honey from that is where we are first our honey from this place how long have you kept this piece here now this is the second here for us having this piece in this place and how much do you produce and for how long? Uh, if we are first like uh, after six months or three months, you can find that by a hive you can get four liters of uh, honey that is pure honey without mixing anything. Wow, that's a good business. This shows that this farm has got a lot of excitement with a lot of creativity that has been put into it, which we want to also encourage anyone who is watching us that you can pick one of these items you have seen presented here and make it your own. It starts small, but you can get somewhere at the end of the day. Something that has amazed me in this farm is what we can see on this board. Nature is full of words of love. Pope Francis. What does this signify and what is in this direction? 
This one calls our attention as human beings that everything that we see, part of nature, does not dictate any other human being. That we do and we use them through our free will. And that is why we chose these uh, words of Pope Francis that nature is full of love, full of words of love. Now, where is this road taking us? This road is taking us towards to the chapel whereby everybody is allowed to enter, to enter and pray as part of human formation. I have never seen a farm with a chapel, but let us go and see what this chapel has for us. Our Lady of Visitation uh, is one of the congregation of the sisters uh, actually here in Kenya. And uh, we were neighbors there in Adams Kibera where we were staying. And uh, we used to feast each other every day. At the end of the day, when we decided to move from Kibera to this place, every day they used to sing for us a song that God will make a way. That's, uh, that was uh, our prayer to us. And then at the end of the day, we came to this farm. And then we bought this farm through their prayers. And that is the song we used to sing. And that is the song also they used to sing for us that the Lord will make a way because our prayer was to get this farm here. And uh, after us buying the farm, this farm, 3,000 friends uh, farm, uh, at the end of the day also they came back and then they were asking us whether the place is good, uh, the place is quiet for prayers. And then they came and put uh, a, a land also here, uh, the other side up there. And then we are now neighbors still. We are praying for each other. We are gathered. Uh, we normally gather together. They come here for retreats, for corrections at the end of the month. So we are still together in prayers every day with our Lady of Station sisters. So you want to tell us that uh, having cooperation makes things work. Yes. But when you needed prayer, you sought them from the sisters. Yes. That is an aspect that any young person can learn. Look, the way they young they are, they got encouraged, even they created a song. Today, you need to create your song asking God for whatever you want because he will create a way for you. So, come here to say thank you. I share your language in Istanbul language. Gracias tante is in Spanish. Danke es con. I don't know what it is in French. Thank you, it is in English. Sunday in Swahili. Sometimes we think that saying thank you is something that is so hard for many of us. But I have found this part of this farm again, they have this small part, it's a place to say thank you. And I want to ask you, why did you choose to have this song for saying thank you? hope that God has already answered your prayers. And that is why we decided to, to write this name, thank you, in different languages. And this, I think, is one thing we need to learn as young people. Can you create a place in your life that you can continuously say thank you to God? Look, we have come from the farm, or true, we have come to a place of worship, and here at this point is a place to say thank you. Now I want to challenge you asking this question, why should you say thank you to God. Is there a reason when you look back to your life you need to give thanks to God? Take that as a challenge. Create a place even if it's for a short time. Let it become part of your life 
to keep saying thank you Lord for the gift of life, for the gift of friends, for the gift of good health, and for the gift of everything that you enjoy as a young person. So this is where we normally sit, mm -hmm. and these are the old tires we saw that it is not waste still. Mm -hmm. We are planting some flowers here, mm -hmm. and these flowers we have uh, water here, there is water in these pipes. We open the water from a certain station and then we water these flowers here. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's great. So you made use of all these old tires? Yes, to make the halter, to make the chairs where we can sit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are rocking this 3000 friends farm to find that even they have created a chapel as you can see here. Let's see, how often do you come to pray in this place and how did you come with this concept? Uh, first, let me start with how we came with this concept to have this chapel here in the 3000 Friends Farm. Uh, we came to realize that after working the whole day and after being uh, interacting with so many people and after seeing so many things uh, outside this chapel, we came to realize that somebody needs a moment of silence. That is a moment of meditation, moment of personal prayers, personal intercessions, and then, and then we decided to look for just a quiet place, a place where somebody can pray without uh, any problem. And then we came out with this chapel, whereby Father Airo calls it a cathedral, whereby you come when you feel that you don't, you cannot talk with somebody, you are very tired, you cannot sit even the, inside the house, that you come to this place, you pray, you meditate, you offer yourself, yourself to the Lord. And then at the end of the day, you find that you come here any time. It is not limited. There is no limitations. But uh, before the end of the, uh, the week, at least every community member will come here. We will come here as a family, as one family for Mass. And then we come here like uh, a week. We can come here to celebrate Mass uh, for two days or three days. And then the other days, we just spend it on the other side. Look at the creativity of the place. Here is the altar. And up here we have the cross. But there's something exciting up. There we have some bell that with the wind it's making some good background noise that is very constructive to help someone to become silent in prayer. I love the concept and as I look at the end there, we have the statue of Our Lady of Visitation. Whoever did this, we want to say thanks to God. When we ask them if it's the young people who are to cause change they want in their lives, how would they do it? The saying is right. If you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, get a friend. Now getting a friend, you have to have some likes some interest. But look what we have seen, reported, and watched in our news of the recent days. School going girls being impregnated, numbers rising day in, day out. This is not what we expect of the young. It is so sad, so demoralizing. It questions our focus, our interest, our expectation of tomorrow. The other day I was having a chat with some young people somewhere and I engaged them in this discussion where I questioned them. Yes, we are talking about pregnancies of school-going children, that is girls. The effects 
of the abuse of a girl child, there is risk sin. They are carrying pregnancies that no one is ready to take responsibility of. And the worst from the reports we had and saw, these pregnancies must have come from the caretakers. What a sad community. When we talk about getting a friend to churn with, in chapter 4 of this book, we say we need to start a conversation that should be a guiding point for empowering the young people. Neither are we excluding or freeing the male child. Maybe they have also suffered. But there is a possibility that the effects are not seen as at the moment. This doesn't leave them to go free. And imagine when it, they will come of age, they will be looking up to their age mates to marry for those who will be interested in marrying, only to find them with kids. They will be left to make tough choices, either to accept them with their kids, or they will be forced to marry younger girls than them. A good that will be there to the future. But if the young themselves come together, get united, learn to respect, as I have said in this book, above all, know how to invest their sexual energy in doing what is profitable than what will ruin their lives. They will remain united. They will go together supporting each other. But when they don't have that, any of us takes advantage of them. We reward them because of goodies, because of some enticement. We darken their future. It is that time we need to realize when we join the conversation of empowering young people, we need to remain with the role of a midwife. A midwife is only there to ensure for the safe delivery of a life. Now, if we have to agree and work for it, we need to do our homework well by empowering the young people to take on the discussion, to hold hand, for we know it right, united we stand, divided we fall. This is what we need to remind the young people, and this is what you need to know as young people. You can only do great if you get connected with other young people. My friend here, yes, a friend that is going to show you some amazement that together we want to do with the young people so that you may have confidence too that what you are doing, even if it's little, it has some impact. You never know which eye you can attract. Let's see what a friend of mine has to tell us. My name is Ryan Muzomi. I am the firstborn in my family. My parents' names are Margaret Kirote and Douglas Kimathi. Now, we met with my friend here at St. Bakita Catholic Church. 
Now you have heard we met in the church and he had the guards to invite me to his home. I was shocked. I couldn't ignore his invite. When we sat, I wanted to know more about him. And that's what I want to ask. Len, what do you do now that school is no longer there? How has been your days? Can you tell us which school are you and which form are you? Uh, I study from a prosperous school known as Moving Forces Academy in Nairobi, based at Eastley. Uh, I'm currently in Form 2. When this time came that you were not going to be in school, what was your experience? At the first place, it was not easy. It was quite hard. But when I came to realize I could do something, I saw the opportunity of continuing my talent as art. Uh, until I came to know I can use my some of my time instead of roaming outside looking for trouble, I could use that time to do my art and continue pursuing it as my career. Who inspired you to start drawing? Uh, on a Saturday morning, I, when I was watching television, I saw an art guy known as Patrick and inspired me by his art that he made and made me feel motivational. Now that you have learned how to draw, what do you think that you need to do with this drawing? Uh, drawing is like a career in dream of my life so that when I start depending on myself, I should find ways on how to get and earn money for myself and for with the well-being of my health matters. When did you discover that you are good at drawing? I was, as I was drawing, some of my relatives and my brother saw, saw what I did and they got amused. So they kept motivating me on continuing to doing my drawings. Now, this is exciting because I want to know, how do you come up what you want to draw and how does you organize yourself. Yeah. The first thing is that you take the picture of what you're going to draw and put much focus on it. You should not be disturbed on how to, you should not be disturbed. In, you should put much focus in what you're drawing than other things that might take your focus away from your art. I emphasize much on encouraging the youth about their time consciousness when they have nothing to do. They should look for something constructive and what could make them prosperous in life. When you follow someone who has no grounds, on what they believe in or what they live, can that affect young people? What's your take? Allow me to say our past inform our present and our present also inform our future. Uh, if future there is at all, eh? if future there is. <laughs> uh, and uh, I, I have been talking about imitation. Young people imitate. They imitate but uh, we need to know, uh, as I was saying earlier, we need to know what we take in. We need to know what we take in. And the young people need to know what they imitate. What they see, it is not everything we see that we need to imitate. We need to see if what we are imitating adds of value, proper value on the person. And we need also to see what the person does. Does it help? The, our present, does it help and will it be able to help our future? And I will say, yes, sometimes we need to, to we cannot tell the young people just to live for the sake of living. We, we, our background has a lot to do with us. And what we receive from the very beginning has a lot to do with us. So our people, our young people need to continue trusting even their, their elders. 
who have lived and have experiences. You know, there are some, uh, especially adolescents, well, there is one of the, uh, the, one of the characteristics of adolescents. It's, it's like, um, it, is, it says this. Sometimes adolescents behave as if nobody understands them. They'll be here as if nobody understands. And you will listen to that expression. You don't understand me. My parents don't understand me. My, my teachers don't understand me. Yes, exactly this is how they feel. But they need to, we need to help them understand. And no, they understand you. But because they have lived these experiences, they want you to do something else that will help you have a brighter and better future. We need to train young people to understand that fact. Um, well... Sometimes, or not, I will say always even. We, it is like a young people, you cannot build a house without foundation. So young people cannot grow <laughs> without taking into consideration their background, what they were trained in, where they were born, and even the values and the cultural grounds and even faith grounds that they got from their parents or from their guardians or whoever they might have encountered in their life. So we cannot tell young people that they can just be a better adult or better elders or elders in the sense of African, African setup, elders, without considering all these values they have acquired in their cultures and in their faith.